Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Leitan Jaizu, Khalu Shay Bihayar. Leitan Jaizu, Khalu Shay Bihayar. to come from. Game, set, and match, Bodie. Again. What's the matter with him? I don't know. Maybe he just likes the real thing. The way he's shaping, he won't even be considered if it happens. I've gone over your reports. They're very thorough, Jack. Thank you, sir. Reading between the lines, there seems to have been a deterioration in one of our best units. Three, seven, and four, five. Bodie and the oil. Or not to beat about the bush, three, seven himself. Bodie. Yes. Give me your considered opinion, Jack. Off the record. Even with 3-7 below par, those two are still a crack team. Oh, not that team, Jack Bodie. Well, he may just be going through a bad patch. Jack, we know he's going through a bad patch. What I'm asking you is why. Old age? What? It's a possibility. Oh, come off it. I'm serious. Look at professional boxers. They're at their peak, then suddenly the legs go. They keep on fighting, fighting well for many years after, but everyone knows they're not where they were. The legs have gone. I've seen him go much younger than Bodhi. Yeah. Have you run a complete physical on him? Yes, and I've disguised it by giving it to everyone else. And? Well, all the medical scientific stuff's tip-top. Oxygen capacity, glycogen storage, the lot. But then so they probably were with Randy Turpin when he was over the hill. And what about his reflexes? Well, there are no empirical tests to measure them to the accuracy needed. Our, our boys are making calculations and adjustments at speeds the human nervous system is not meant to be able to attain. Could he be overtrained, maybe, still? That can't be ruled out. How would you deal with it if that was the case? Standard alternative. Either we lay him off for a while, rest and test, or we double his training load in all categories and uh, examine again. What would you call that routine? Make or break. How close is he to his limits right now? Could he take that sort of increase? There's only one way to find out. Well, we're not running a convalescent home, Jack, are we? No, sir. What are you two on? Three minute intervals? Yeah. Well, we'll try it again on two. Thank you. 
64. 65. 65, that one didn't count. Oh, that's it. You know, if you counted in French, I'd have made it. Your arithmetic achievements are all behind you, my son. <laughs> you ever thought of becoming a missionary? Listen, I don't like positions overseas, OK? Instruction. Each line contains an odd letter. Answer one to five. Okay, I'm going to shorten your answer time from one and a half seconds to half a second. Instruction. If 80 documents are encoded in half an hour, how many in seven and a half hours? Answer A to E. How'd I do, Doc? Oh, for a mental defective, it was a genius score. For a genius, it was mentally defective. And yeah, what about those deliberately wild answers I threw in to confuse old Herbie? I'm afraid your wild answers have long since ceased to take anyone by surprise. Least of all the computer, which already has a built-in personalised idiosyncrasy function just for you. You kid. Has it never occurred to you that the only questions you deliberately answer wrongly are the ones to which you easily know the right answers? Uh -huh. And has it further never penetrated your pretty curls that the computer is fully aware of your areas of competence? and consequently takes special register of extreme deviations from normal and expected competence. What are you doing tonight? As for taking refuge in sexual chauvinism, you've already branded yourself loud and clear. What? How? By attributing masculinity to the computer. Well, Herbie. Hmm, and interestingly enough, although you make it male, presumably because you feel somewhat in awe of its undoubted power, you also feel impelled to denigrate it with a, with a childish, patronising diminutive which suggests on the face of it a profound insecurity in sexual demarcations. Wouldn't you agree, Bodhi? Hmm? Oh, yes, miles out of his depth. Still watching his struggles gives one a certain masochistic pleasure. I'll tell you what. I'll bet you a fiver that if you took me home with you tonight, put me on your pillow, when we woke up in the morning, I'd have turned back into a frog. But... Here's five pounds. Take it. Go, take it now. Next time I need a tooth fairy, I'll send for you. Goodbye, boys. Fancy my chances with a queen of cybernetics, then? Uh, it's the first time I've ever seen a piece of cheese try to seduce a mouse. <laughs> well, what happened to your lofty ambitions in that direction, then? I'm a fat, waiting cat, and I like my mice well fed. <laughs> Seventy-seven on three. Alpha, one nine. Oh, Mr. Cowley. Ah, Dr. Ross, is that Bodie's file? Yes, as you can see, it confirms my early report last month. A 10% decline in mental faculties in so short a time. Well, you see, there is a possibility that the tests my predecessor made were consistently inflated. But my very first result also tallied with her previous ones. And, of course, Doyle's quotient is unchanged, as we expected. Are there any precedents in your experience, Dr. Ross, to this kind of thing? No, I am running a check on other institutions and data banks just to make sure, but that information will take some time to come through. There is one factor in this last test which may be significant. Yeah. 
You see, the, the decline in performance was markedly reduced as the answer time was restricted. You can see there his scores on 10 second intervals, 6, 4, 2. And the less time he has to think, the better he does. Well, that's one way of putting it. What will be another? The more he thinks, the worse he does. Well, that sounds different somehow. Well, facts are facts. Do you call a glass of water half empty or half full? If it was a small glass and it had malt whiskey in it, I'd say it was half empty. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Having a drink in a pub. And what pub is that? The checkered flag. Anything else? No. And I couldn't see him fighting Miss Pearl either. What do you mean? He must have had a heavy training session. He looks knackered. <laughs> Thank you, 77. You can sign off now. Alpha out. 77 to base. Close down. 1900 hours. Precisely. First time for everything, you know. <laughs> Is this a social quarter? I'm surprised you've got any energy left for socialising during the current training schedule. Oh, you know what they say, don't you? All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Right. Doyle, I'm disappointed with you. Oh? Your results have been, let's say, unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory? You seem to have lost your edge. <laughs> I seem to have lost my edge. Yes. And nobody else has lost his edge except me. All right, you got me. It's very sneaky. What do you think's the matter with Bodie? Nothing's the matter with Bodie. Nothing? Look, Jack's running us pretty hard, you know. Some of his simulations make the real thing look soft. You're hanging in there? Yeah, well, Bodie did all this stuff before he joined CI5. I didn't. Maybe he finds repetition boring. No matter how he finds it, he's not coming up to scratch. He'll get over it. Over what? Whatever it is. Whatever what is. I don't know. Are you covering up for him? Covering what, precisely? Nothing. Then what? Covering up in general. What are you trying to tell me? You're trying to tell me that Bodie's over the hill or something? You've got a grade seven assignment tomorrow morning, just supposing. Yeah. You've got a choice of three men for your section. Your pool is Drake, Bodie, Charlton, Fields, Taggart. Which three do you take? Doyle, which three? Charlton. Taggart. And Fields, but that's just tomorrow morning, not next... Next week, month, year. I'll bear it in mind. Miss Black, Jennifer Black. Yes. Uh, George Cowley, CI5. How do you do? I believe I know your stepfather, Colonel Barrett, MP. Why, yes. Uh, this is a wee bit abrupt, but uh, perhaps you give me the pleasure of having lunch with me. I'm afraid I'm already meeting someone. Yes, Susan Ratcliffe. I've taken the extreme liberty of cancelling her on your behalf. Cancelling? Yes. You can telephone her from the restaurant. I'd like to talk to you about a certain Mr. Bodie. Mr. Cowley, although I've known Bodie for some time, I'm afraid I don't know him quite as well as you think. And there are no personal difficulties between you? Good Lord, no. You'll forgive me if this seems indelicate, but uh, perhaps you might be aware if he has any women problems. Just between you and me, I should say Bodie doesn't have women problems. It's us women that have Bodie problems. Now that we've emancipated ourselves, there's lots of other things for us to worry about. How much have you seen of him in the last few months? Fair amount. More than usual? Possibly. Have you noticed any change in his behaviour? Mr Cowley, is all this really necessary? Absolutely. Aren't you being overprotective? 
Miss Black, in time, money, and equipment, it takes four times as long and costs twice as much to train one CI-5 man as one airline pilot. There are, however, much greater numbers of fully qualified pilots throughout the world than jobs available to them. I, on the other hand, am unable to fill the vacancies I already have, with the cream of the armed forces in the entire country to choose from. <laughs> it's easier to replace a trapeze artist in a high wire act than any one of my men. You've convinced me, but I'm sorry, there's nothing else I can tell you about Bodie. Think about it. Something may come to mind. All right. And meanwhile, yes? if and when you do see him, keep an eye open. Spy on him. Oh, a slight exaggeration. It's for his own good. I can't help feeling all this is none of my business. You know, we don't have a bad life here. This is still one of the most elegant and civilized places on Earth. I think we all have a vested interest in this continuity, even although not all of us need get our hands dirty. Ready, Bodie? Yep. In your own time. You'd have five lives left. Oh, dead again, sunshine. Consider a little child. Three years old. It takes a bucket fills it with sand, pats it down, turns it over, carefully lifts the bucket, and it has a sand castle. And suddenly, it took the spade and destroyed the sand castle. If we could duplicate the quality of that action of destruction in every motion and every non-motion of our lives. Then we would be living with minds as pure and as free as a three-year-old child. How is it that a child could act with purpose and yet, it has no time in which to conceive of a purpose. The motive and the motion are one and the same unity. What the child can do, but has never learned to do, you must learn to do. Whatever it is you have to do, you must find a way to do it. close to your gym, but do we have to come here afterwards? There's hundreds of other places. They're good lads here, salt of the earth. 
Six pints long and a pack of crisps, please, love. <laughs> six pints long and a pack of crisps, please. Oh, come on. Look, six pints long and a pack of crisps. It is interesting how you in the West, who were the first to make a distinction between the soul and the body, should have had so much trouble and disagreement about where to locate it. Some place it in the blood, some in the liver, others put it in the heart, the head. As they began to understand the machinery of the body, examining them under microscopes, they found, to their surprise, the soul is nowhere to be found. I'm afraid I still don't quite understand. You say there's something wrong with Bodhi's soul. Incorrect. If there is such a thing as a soul, then there can be, by definition, nothing wrong with it. A soul is a soul. It is perfect. But when the soul which acts through the body is now satisfied by the body's action, then the body, not the soul, becomes sick. Then where is he sick? Here. Is that bad? It is the worst. Mm. Hey, John. Look, it, it was an accident. Let me buy you a drink. No, 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 no way. Please let me buy you a drink. No, I'll get these. No offense, John. Hey, darling. No two for this lad, whatever he's drinking. Case situation. It's right? always a special case situation. You should have made an adjustment. Oh, yeah. Well, before my shoot opens, all in free fall. Before you hit the ground. Okay, 3 7. Sneaky. Hey! That's what I call poetry. Yeah, yeah, I was very moved. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, special case for five. Doyle! <laughs> Instruction. From each line, choose the letter that does not belong. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Interesting, Bodie. You didn't start too well, but on the last pattern recognition series, you were 100%. Was I? Oh, well, I've always been a good finisher. <laughs> yeah, as far as finishing goes, he's the end. However, your excellent score is such a deviation from your norm that I'm afraid I shall have to exclude it from your overall result. That's not fair. Something tells me you had access to the answers on that question. Yeah, he, he started cribbing when he was in his cot. Have you a better explanation of this sudden mastery? No. 
Oh, I've been doing a lot of practice down at the arcade lately on the Star Wars machine. Don't you think you're perhaps a little old for that kind of thing? Well, the first bandit I ever tackled, Doctor, was one-armed, you know. Got the jackpot. Yeah, 60,000 old sixpences. Really heavy, you know. Burst into tears. Tears. Wouldn't give me three bananas. Yeah, he was 25 at the time. Fine. Everyone happy with four five? No. Three seven. Booty. Jack? Fantastic. The boy's really come on. You can forget everything I ever said about him being over the hill. Splendid shape, too. You're pleased with his physical condition, Dr. Edley? Yes. Wrist pulse 42, lung capacity five and a half litres. We could enter him for the derby and wager our pensions. <laughs> Dr. Ross? Well, I was clearly going to be the voice of dissent on this one. In my professional opinion, 3-7 should be removed from standby classification pending an in-depth examination. Rubbish. Philip. Dr. Ross, with respect, we've all read your reports and I'm sure that for whatever it is they measure, the measurements are extremely accurate. The question is, are they relevant? Look, during the last ten weeks, tests and observations have indicated unequivocally that his intellectual capacities at all levels, perceptive, <laughs> logical, intuitive, long and short term recall, all of them are inconsistent in relation to each other and erratic in themselves. Now, I've made a comparison of his voice patterns during the same his period. His voice patterns? And added together, they show that he's not in a healthy state of mind. Dr. Ross, don't you yourself point out that his most recent results are more than impressive? Well, that was exactly my phrase, more than. The improvement was too marked. I mean, are we quite sure we're talking about the same person? I mean, ha haven't you even noticed anything odd about his general behaviour? What's wrong with his behaviour? Well, half the time he carries on like a child. Dr. Ross, these men are trained to kill and be killed. Every day they're called on to face death. Not bangs and smoke, death. So that ordinary citizens can go about their lives without fear or apprehension. It's natural for boys like Bodie to be flippant about injury and death. Thank you, Jack. But it's a matter of degree. I mean, take the incident with the water pistol. Oh, for God's sake. It was not healthy. Dr. Ross, these boys don't exactly have a healthy occupation. Can't they just have a little bit of simple fun now and again? Oh, as long as their mental capacities are unimpaired, they can have as much simple, hairy, masculine fun as they like. Oh, maybe it was a turning back there. <laughs> I thought you said you'd been here before. Well, if I said so, I must have been, mustn't I? Ross. 41-425-16. Background biography. Operative CI-5. 0298-B11. Classified subject, 37 Bodhi. Restricted. Give your palm and voice print identification. Kate Ross, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more... You are clear. Reoperate. Temperate. Biography, operative CI stroke 5, subject 37, Bodhi. Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Where did you meet him? We work together. What sort of work? Secretaries. Go on. That's yeah, true, honest. What sort of secretary? We work for a lady novelist. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She dictates a chapter each day. Both at the same time? Yeah, well, no, he, he does one day, I do the next. While he's typing up, I'm taking down, and vice versa. What sort of books? Bondage and romance. <laughs> How old is she? 89. She's the wife of a vicar. I don't believe you. Ah, oh, yes, miles out of his depth. Still? Watching his struggles gives one a certain masochistic pleasure. Now, that correlates with those readings on the graph there. Now, to take one of the more recent examples. Oh, the uh, first band that I ever tackled, Doctor, only had one arm. Yeah, it's called the jackpot. Yeah, 60,000 old sixpence. It's really heavy. First in the tears. Tears. Wouldn't give me three bananas. It was only 25. 
Leaving aside the humour, the factors are these frequencies, which are areas of pitch and harmonic, which, which are almost never in the conscious control of the speaker. Uh, but what does it all prove? All the observations taken together during the last few months make a classic pattern of reoccurring elation and depression caused by some trauma which we can locate to within a period of weeks. Ah, still waters run deep. Get out of it! What is this? Now don't be snotty, son. Some of these cowboys are no mangoes, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, Bertie George, in the, uh, the Doyle. What are you doing? Yeah, second race. Sorry. The Bodie we may never know, even if he did have some disturbing experience. Besides, don't his latest achievements on physical as well on your side confirm that he's back on an even keel, so to speak? Oh, on the contrary. I should say everything indicates he's approaching a cusp. A cusp? I've been applying the mathematics of catastrophe theory to, to this data. The cusp is where the subject is transformed instantaneously, violently, if you like, from one state of being to another. In some way, it's opposite. I see. You aren't taking me seriously. <laughs> Perhaps if you could explain to me in layman's terms. Very well. In my view, and I've taken full consideration of his combat training details from Jack Crane, in my view, Bodie is suffering from, from, from a death wish. Bodie! Right, your moment of truth, son. Can you ride or can you ride? The risks he's been taking in training correlate precisely with, with the reckless, flamboyant qualities that are, that are revealed in my own empirical findings. And now, I'm afraid, Kate, I can't possibly take you seriously. Let's make it go faster! Yeah. You twist the grip! Which?
champ, son. Rid like a champ. What the hell was all that about? Billy's dead, Doyle's king! You were fantastic. Listen, mate. Just ride your own races in future, all right? <laughs> What's the matter? You rode brilliantly. Yeah, that little lot rode to block me out. It's very dangerous. Oh, you're a mother. Oh, is that the champagne for the winners? I don't think you lads really deserve this, you know, but uh, I think I'll yeah, be generous. Yeah, yeah. Yes, let's have a little drink for the losers. Thank you. He's really annoying them. Yeah, I think he knows them from somewhere. Do you think he might get into a fight? No, no chance. Where can you be sure? If he got into a punch up, he'd lose his job. As a secretary? He'd never take another letter in his life. So let me show you one last thing. Data time 00298 stroke B, 11 classified. Call back 370C25, repeat and print out. Hey, where? Well, look, we're leaving. Well, let's go and get What's it. happening? Widowmaker. Widowmaker, what's He's up? challenging King Billy to the Widowmaker. What are these? These are selective biogs of a total survey of every man who served in Bodhi's special service squad in the overseas division before he joined CI5. Trevor. I remember him. He was a good soldier. Dead. Yes, accident in a building site. Trying to save someone from a falling crane. Philpot. Car crash. Dead. I'm well aware that some of these men are no longer alive, Dr. Ross, but I think the macabre element is coming from you. Last man up to chicken. All right. You're on. None of these men are any longer alive, Mr. Cowley, and none on that list were killed in action. Not for you, you know. Yeah, I know. It's for the bike. Right. You're going to need a lot of speed for that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Too much, and you know what? What? You'll loop the loop. Do you drew this up? Today, I also made a comparison with post demop histories of all comparable service regiments, which you can see there. The proportion of violent deaths to ex-members of Bodie's regiment is not just greater than any other one in the army, it's ten times greater. They were recruited for exceptionally hazardous missions. Yeah. They're dying like flies. They take risky jobs, deep-sea divers, quarrying, security guards. In quite safe employment also. I mean, the most recent one was only two months ago. In fact, it was in Bodice platoon. You wreck my bike, I'll burn your rubber duck. Come on. Well, aren't we going to stay and watch him? Cheer him on. You want to watch these clowns? Not me. Is it really dangerous what they're going to do? Depends who's riding the bikes. Is it dangerous? Yeah, it's dangerous. They could hurt themselves. They could kill themselves. The C stroke M, what does that mean? My abbreviation. Uh, the manner of death. C is coroner. That, that's coroner's verdict. Um, M A is misadventure. M is manslaughter. So death to us joy. What's that? The motto of special service. A better example. So don't you think now that we should at least reconsider Bodhi's suitability for grade seven call out? I think we've got to move faster than that. Get more details in this, can you? Well, I don't think it's that urgent. Maybe not, but we can't be too sure. Who goes first? Two goes each. Yeah. I'll go first. I know you from somewhere, don't I?
next time. Shame next time, Billy boy. What do you think, pal? You have one more go after me. CI5. Ah, he's waiting for you. Thank you. George Cowley. How do you do? Dr. Ross. This is the digest of the Williams file. Yes. Thanks, Dave. And that is part of the rest of it. Inspector, you implied on the telephone that the case was closed. Of course it isn't closed, it was unsolved. With no leads, no suspects. It was a bank holiday weekend, one of those bike meets, 5,000 people from all over the country, half of whom had and still have no fixed address. They were all suspects. What kind of list would you like? A mailing list of the motorcycle world? He was involved in a fight, you said. The post-mortem showed bruising of the knuckles and other parts of the body consistent with blows delivered as well as received. But Williams was trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So we believe. Therefore, it may have been someone with similar skill. Maybe. Or more than one. There were a lot of gangs that weekend, chapters, as I believe they termed themselves. Surely they could have been followed up. They could and were as far as possible. The other counties cooperated, but they have their crime problems too, you know. And that was that. Williams had a history of violence himself. In the service of his country. And before that. But not since he was discharged. Not on the form books, maybe. What about this witness? The one who wouldn't testify? The girlfriend. Why did she refuse? Shock, fear of retribution. You didn't try to persuade her? Even if she had spoken up, she would never have survived in court. Defence would have had a field day. And now she's vanished. Do you have a photograph of her? May I have this? By all means. Thank you, Inspector. Hey, if you're ego on a day trip, or is this going to be a long weekend? I quite like it out here, you know. I think I'll stick around for a bit. If you're trying to aggravate those guys, you know, you're doing a great job. Yeah, a little help from my friends, no. eh? <laughs> no, no, no. Any trouble you get into, mate, you're on your own. Trouble? Who wants trouble? Get up.
We gotta do something about them, Billy boy. Where's Moody? Who cares? You were meant to keep an eye on him. Yes, before I found out what he was up to, my eyes got tired. What is he up to? Cross between an ego trip and a death wish, you ask me. Well, what do you mean? Oh, don't ask me. I'm staying right out of it. He's gone completely balmy. He's up there trying to pick a fight with some hell's angels. What? It's stupid, isn't Those it? Those angels killed one of the men from Bodhi's old platoon. He'll kill him. It'll be the end of CI-5 if he does. Do you know where they've gone? Must be up there somewhere. Was this girl around? Yes, she was. I saw her. She was the one who was hanging around looking at Bodhi. I thought they knew each other. She was William's fiance. There's too many of them. It's gonna be okay. Hey, John. She's been talking to you, hasn't she? Well, she should never have opened her mouth. Take him, Jim. Come in, Jim. Finish that necklock, I'll shoot you dead. Are these the ones who killed Keith Williams? Yes. Will you stand up in court and say that? Say it! Yes. I will. Sir? Yeah? Mind if I ask a question? What? If I had have killed him, would you have pulled the trigger? What do you think? What do you reckon? I reckon you might have done. Yeah. 